my hunting partner today. On today's show, it's the first and oldest hunting preserve in Minnesota, and it's still around. Let's go hunting. <laughs> Up next, meet Minnesota State Park Vagabonds. Is this the best job in the world? Nothing wrong with working. Working's good. Our walk in the park this week visits a park that has 9,000 years of archaeological history. The Minnesota Bound Classic this week is all about Coleman. Coleman lamps, Coleman stoves. We're going to meet the ultimate Coleman collector. Here she goes. Those stories and more next. Minnesota Bound. Brought to you by Minnesota Select GMC Dealers. Hi everybody, Raven and I welcome you to the show. You know, Raven learned to hunt pheasants at a place called a shooting preserve or hunting preserve. There's lots of them now in Minnesota, but the very first one was just outside of Hugo, Minnesota called Wild Wings. Laura Shera went there and she has the story. Finding places to hunt isn't always easy. Either is finding game birds. Well, the answer back in 1956 was this. Create your own hunting paradise. And an idea that stuck. Hunters created Wild Wings Hunting Preserve way back when. And even now, the club keeps busy. About 60 years ago, exactly this year, 1956, there was a need for hunting close to the Twin Cities. So they wanted a place they could get to quickly, have a great hunting experience, and be back to work either that afternoon or the next day. So we provided convenience, still do. That's our big key mark is the convenience that we have. We're 25 minutes from two and a half million people. A destination built on the old cliche, if you build it, they will come. We have got a very aesthetically pleasing piece of property. The facility is unbelievable. They got, I don't know how many fields. I think they got about 600 acres or something like that. We got pheasant hunting. We've got chucker partridge. We have bobwhite quail. We shoot wild turkeys also. And we have two fully automated sporting clays courses and a five stand. Owners operate wild wings much like a golf course, limited to members and guests. We limit the total number of people, so. and. With our access, our proximity to the cities, we've got to limit the numbers or it's mass chaos. Over the years, hunters from all walks of life have walked these hunting fields. Matt Burke oh, from sure. the Vikings. Jesse signed his. <laughs> Kevin McHale, oh, Bud Grant. Sure. You recognize that guy? Eric Clapton. No way. Yeah, yeah, he was here hunted. I'll say, I want to say this. We have a real simple strategy in managing the club. We treat everybody here like family. They're part of our extended family. Okay, it's time for me to join the hunting family. My hunting partner today. You excited? Me too. Tyler, a Wild Wings guide, had an adventure in store. Today we're gonna hunt in a field called Labs Landing. Oh, perfect. Raven will like that. Okay, I'm ready to roll. Girl, find it. Fetch it up. Good girl. It's awesome. Good girl. Come on. Get it. Good girl. Fetch it up. Look at her tail. <laughs> I'm not sure who's having the most hunting thrills, Raven or me. It's all you. Yes, there we go. <laughs> Beautiful bird. Nice shot. Thank you. We have dinner on the table. The best part, the club offers food after time in the field. Jeff's wife, Sue, makes uh, the pot pies with uh, the other girls up in the kitchen. and. Uh, Pat myself and they're delicious. Count me in. 
Look at this. So what do we have here? This is homemade pheasant. For more than 60 years, family and friends have been hunting, connecting, and sharing wild game meals here at Wild Wings. I don't know what you're having. <laughs> it's a history worth its weight in ringnecks, and it's still flying. Up next, the Whipples live on the road in our woods, and boy, are they good news for the state parks they visit. We explain. Minnesota Bound is brought to you by Minnesota Select GMC Dealers, Rapala Ice Force, Star Bank, and by Connecticut. Up next, if you're looking for the perfect job, well, this might be it if you like to camp. It's a story about a couple that are campground hosts at our beautiful Minnesota State Parks. Bill Shirk has the story. If life is an adventure, base camp might be campsite number 50. You ready? I'm ready. A temporary but home sweet home to Father Hennepin State Park's two biggest fans. And every time we uh, come up here, it just feels like, ah, oh, we're home again. Jeannie and Dwayne Whipple keep a close eye on the park. It's really clean down here. Just a campground host and just do uh, PR for the park and then uh, whatever jobs they assign you, each park is different. Looking pretty good down there. Yeah. <clears throat> Hosts are helpful, but they're our information source in the summertime. For the parks I manage, the biggest thing is I want them to be available to the campers. Yep, and these guys are all a group, and they're all gone four-wheeling for the weekend. Turns out park execs got more than they bargained for when the Whipples signed up. Yep, nothing wrong with working. Working's good. Laid a lot of trails, painted almost every building here. There's no job that they're unwilling to do. Well, they are definitely uh, some really hardworking folks. We just always have loved being around people, you know, watching the campers come in, giving, helping them out in any way. Almost all Minnesota state parks offer a spot for helpers. Typically our hosts uh, come for a month at a time. We've always had people interested, so we kind of limit them to a month. You usually get a free full hookup site wherever you're at in exchange for 15, 20, 25 hours a week of work. Which is where the Whipple story takes quite a turn. <laughs> I better just let them explain. I don't know, it just kind of happened. We thought if we had to go back to work, we will. The Whipples retired, sold darn near everything, including the house, and turned summer camp into all four seasons. For 12 years, we've been just moving around every few months somewhere else around the country. They start late spring at Federal Dam Campground on Leech Lake. And then in the fall, it's up here at Father Hennepin. When leaves fall and snow flies, the Whipples drive south, way south. We're between Austin and San Antonio in a state park, and it's called Lockhart. We stay there for January, February, March. Then we were slowly work our way back up to Minnesota. The biggest thing is, what you do, win the lottery? I said, no, we never won the lottery. Just work hard and save your money and live simple. We just really enjoy it. Just volunteer and stay free, live free, no tax, no, you, no utilities. Very simple. Just a few to self-proclaimed volunteer vagabonds. This is a great lifestyle. Literally, no baggage, no stress. A lot of times we stay at the same park for three, four years or so, and then we like to try to find something a little bit different, do something a little different. But when you work this hard, seems no one wants you to go. Yes, yes, yeah, sometimes they, people have said that, we're taking your tires off, you, you're not leaving, you have to stay here. Somebody that's really willing to work hard, like both Dwayne and Jeannie are, are just invaluable. It's like having an extra couple of staff members. It's funny where life takes you. People who retire so they can work. Oh yeah, we have no intentions of uh, quitting anytime soon. 
Coming up, a state park nestled right next to Mille Lacs. Don't miss the treasures to behold at Cathio State Park. Closed captioning is brought to you by Border View Lodge. Walk in the Park is brought to you by the Minnesota Zoo, connecting people to animals and nature to help save wildlife around the world. Time now for a walk in the park. This week we're going to Cathio State Park, located on the west side of Mille Lacs, a beautiful place with lots of interesting history. Photojournalist Josh Bryant got the story. We are at Mille Lacs Cathio State Park, the fourth biggest state park in the, in the state of Minnesota. Oh, this is my favorite park. This is probably our, uh, my sixth time at the park. We are on the south shore of Lake Mille Lacs, kind of right in the center of Minnesota here. We're mostly a family campground. Uh, we've got a lot of really great trails. The trails are great. We've got all different kinds from easy to hard and a lot of topography. Well, we first came because of the camper cabins, and um, it's a nice way to go camping without having to sleep on the ground in a tent, and yet it's rustic enough that, you know, we, we cook on campfire, and uh, it's a perfect setting for that. Uh, we get a lot of horseback riders in the fall. Uh, the bugs kind of go down. It makes it a lot more fun. We see a lot of fishermen still this time of year. The river is the main draw here. This is Bass City here. Man, I caught like 15 bass yesterday, but they were like one pounders, you know, and a couple of small northerns. Panfish is what I'm going for. Well, the little ones. <laughs> Fishing. Fishes. They're smarter than you think. We've got a couple different really great archaeological sites within the park. Uh, we've got an interpretive center here. This is where uh, all the families and school groups come down to. It's a great place to learn about the history of the area. You know, it's one of the most archaeological important sites in the state of Minnesota. Uh, the evidence suggests that people have lived here for at least 9,000 years. First, Seward Duluth came through, and then later, Father Lewis Hennepin spent six months with the Dakota Indians here. They found a lot of village sites, um, but you know, every time a tree tips over, we can find pottery shards and arrowheads and stuff like that. Everyone likes to go up the wall. Watchtower, uh, the observation tower. It's a, it's an old fire watchtower built in the 30s and it quit being used in the 70s. And and we moved it over here from south of Isle, and uh, people have been been enjoying it ever since. We're about halfway up now. We're just at the top of the trees, so we're getting there. Are you afraid of heights at all? I'm not. No, I am afraid of walking too much, though. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Really good views of, the, of Lake Mille Lacs and the surrounding area. You can really get a good look at the topography and if the colors are out, it's a great place to be. We're looking down on Lake Mille Lacs and a couple of the islands, Father Hennepin Island and Spirit Island. You can hardly see anything man-made from up there. It's really cool, especially this time of year. The fall colors are coming out. It's just great up there. It's open all year round until we get snow or rain that, that freezes, and then we'll close it for the winter. Everyone that comes here really likes it. We battle some mosquitoes and ticks like everywhere else, but uh, this time of year is my favorite time of year. It's just gorgeous out here. My favorite thing about the park is there's so many different things here. Uh, I've worked at prairie parks, I've worked at pine parks, uh, I've worked in deciduous parks, and I've got a little bit of everything here. It's just peaceful and quiet, and uh, it's really pretty, it's wooded. 
it just is a fantastic park. I mean, everything, you know, so mellow here and just nice. Still ahead, a classic that tells the tale of a first class collector. We call it Big Red. A collector of all things Coleman. Minnesota Bound is brought to you by Ellsworth Cooperative Creamery, Radco Truck Accessories, Totem Resorts, the premier destination for world class fishing. Time now for our Minnesota Bound Classic. You know, one of the most famous names in all of outdoor products was Coleman. Coleman stoves, Coleman lanterns, Coleman sleeping bags, you name it. Well, we found a guy who's Coleman crazy. He collects everything Coleman. Call it the natural cycle of things. Each fall, Minnesota's creatures settle in and so do Minnesotans in the near silence of the woods. Deer camp tends to be a special place. The event of the year for them, I enjoy it. In Don Colston's camp, hunters live by one rule. Coleman, no electricity. Yep, Coleman. Look around. Listen. Yeah, it's fun. Lights up the whole place just like electricity, and it's fun. Coleman is more than a word to Don Colston. Those famous hissing lamps are part of his life. A look around Don's basement might better explain his story. This is a small collection of some of the guys. They got they got everything known a man. And Don started collecting 10 years ago, but his interest sparked long before that. I always wanted a red Coleman lantern. Started using that, using Coleman stuff when I was a teenager out camping with my buddies. It's one of those things, you know, you want to buy some, but you never get around to it. I never got that red 200A lantern. Until he happened upon one in a Red Wing shop. Soon enough, one lantern became two, two became four, and Don became a collector. I got about right here in the basement, I got a little over 100 lamps and lanterns, and they're all different. I mean, there's no two alike. The IL-316 was Coleman's very first. Here she goes. They called it the sunshine of the night. It truly was. Here's an odd one here. I got this. This is all in Japanese. Over the years, Coleman designed all kinds of styles. And in the case of Canadian Coleman's, we call it big red. All kinds of colors. All the way over to here, they got this pink. Uh, 5120, I think it is. Don even owns lanterns from the old ballroom parlors. They made those back in the teens, too. And uh, same type of thing, pressure lamp, pump it up and it hangs from a hook. Now, Don's interest burns beyond gas lamps. Coleman made irons, too. The red one there, it's quite rare. And it's one temperature hot. Don paid $1,051 for that red Canadian. Of course, his wife found out. <laughs> she thought I'd lost my mind. And the next morning when I woke up, I thought I'd lost my mind too. I'd not spend that much money on an iron. But uh, that was the most expensive thing I ever bought. But I got it, and I enjoy it. Then that's it. That's what counts. Fact is, this entire collection's not really about the money. It's about the International Coleman Collectors Club Don now heads up. It's about the search for that next find. And of course, it's all about the extraordinary nature of the simple lamp which changed our outdoor world. The sound of that Coleman lantern hissing, it's something you'll never forget, and it's a friendly sound. It kind of becomes your companion. Oh yes, very famous name, Coleman. I remember the first Coleman lantern I tried to light uh, took me a while to figure it out, but I did. Well, that about does it for us. Remember, introduce a kid to the great outdoors. I'm Ron Chera, and my nervous Nelly star of the show here is Raven, right? Right? Oh, my goodness. Transportation provided by Premier Transportation. Call 1-800-899-7433.
To get more Minnesota Bound, including full episodes, go to mnbound.com. And to follow our latest adventures, like us on Facebook 